Welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this first lecture, we will be dealing with Introduction, Elements of Communication System, Modulation, Need for Modulation and Time Domain and Frequency Domain Analysis. First of all, what is communication? Sharing of information from one point to another is called communication. The whole electronic system that helps in communication is known as communication system. There are mainly seven elements of communication system. They are source, transducers, modulator, channel, demodulator, transducer, and finally destination. The transducer modulator blocks together is known as transmitter block and the demodulator transducer block together is known as receiver block. Source can be of any type that produce a signal. For example, source can be a microphone that records a non-electrical low frequency signal. This non-electrical low frequency signal is then passed on to a transducer. Transducer is a device that converts one form of signal to another form. Here, transducer converts non-electrical low frequency signal into electrical low frequency signal. Then, modulator energizes the low frequency signal to a high frequency signal and it is then passed on to a channel by an antenna. There are four types of channel, twisted pair, coaxial cable, optic fiber and free space. Then the signal is captured at the receiver side and demodulator converts the high frequency signal to a low frequency signal. Then this electrical low frequency signal is passed on to a transducer and is converted to non-electrical low frequency signal or of the required form of the signal at the destination. As said earlier, modulation is the process of energizing low frequency signal using a high frequency signal. This high frequency signal is called as carrier signal. Before going into next topic, let us understand what is meant by bandwidth. Bandwidth is the range of frequency occupied by the signal in the positive axis. Bandwidth is always calculated in frequency domain. Now let us consider an example. Here, a signal G of T is converted into frequency domain and bandwidth is measured. Then going on to the need of modulation. Firstly, modulation helps to reduce the antenna size. Let us consider a transmitter without modulator. When we transmit say a 30 Hz signal, we will see a 30 Hz signal through the antenna. For an antenna, we know that height is proportional to wavelength. By the given equations, for a 30 Hz signal, we will get the height around 1000 km. We know that it is practically not feasible. Now, if you use a modulator in the transmitter section, this 30 Hz signal can be energized to 30 MHz. Thus, we can reduce the antenna height to 1 meter, which is practically possible. Then, modulation also helps in multiplexing of signals and also avoids mixing of signals. Let us consider three types of signals with 5 kHz bandwidth. If there is no modulator, the signals will overlap each other and information loss happens. Using modulators, each signal can be modulated using three carrier signals of 1 MHz, 2 MHz and 3 MHz respectively. Thus, we can avoid mixing of signals. This type of multiplexing is called frequency division multiplexing. We will learn about this multiplexing in detail in the upcoming lectures. Modulation also reduces the effect of noise. We know that at low frequencies, noise power will be larger. So the signal to noise ratio will be much lower than one. That is, message signal will be full of noise and will be difficult to recover at the receiver side. At higher frequencies, noise power will be smaller. So, signal to noise ratio will be much larger than 1. Message signal can be easily recovered at the receiver side. Next topic is time domain and frequency domain analysis. One of the important things that we need in communication is Fourier transform. We know that Fourier transform is a vast topic. Here, we explain only the necessary topics for communication. First of all, all Fourier transform can be used to analyze signals in frequency domain. The equations for Fourier transform are as given. 
Now we can learn about Fourier transform of some of the common signals used in communication. First, rectangular function. Consider a rectangular function of amplitude a and width t. Applying Fourier transform, we'll get a sync function. Since the low frequency lobe or the main lobe consists of 99% of power, we neglect the side lobes. We'll get the bandwidth as 1 by 2. Now, let us discuss about some of the important properties of Fourier transform that are used in communication system. First one is central ordinate property. This property says that if we consider a graph in time domain, then area under that graph will be equal to the amplitude of the graph in frequency domain at the origin. Next property is frequency shifting or modulation property. This property is very important in communication. Consider a signal g of t, which is multiplied with cos 2 pi f c t. When we do the Fourier transform, by this property, we will get a shifted version of the signal in the frequency domain with half the amplitude. Now, let us analyze it by using a diagram. We know that for a rectangular function g of t, Fourier transform will be a sync function g of f. When the rectangular signal is multiplied with cos 2 pi f c t, and when we take Fourier transform of it, we will see that the sync function will get shifted to higher frequency fc. From this analysis, we can say that the cos function is used to shift from lower frequency to higher frequency. This is also known as modulation. Now considering the next property, that is duality or symmetric property. We know that the Fourier transform of a signal g of t is g of f. Now if we take Fourier transform of this signal by replacing f by t, then we will get it as g of minus f. This is obtained by replacing t with minus f in this function. Let us consider an example. Consider a function del of t. We know that the Fourier transform of del of t is 1. Now if we take Fourier transform of 1, then we can obtain the result by replacing t by minus f and we get del of minus f as the result. We know that del of minus f is equal to del of f. Thus, from this example, we can also say that the frequency of a constant or a DC signal is zero. One of the most important thing in communication is the cosine function. Fourier transform of the cosine function can be obtained as follows. We know that cos 2 pi f c t is same as 1 into cos 2 pi f c t. Now, by using modulation property, when we take Fourier transform, we will get shifted impulses with half the amplitude as the result. From this result also, we will understand that the cosine signal carries the low frequency signal to a higher frequency and this process is simply known as modulation. This is about the introduction part of analog communication. We will see the detail about the topics in analog communication in the next lecture.